Hello, Rick off here. Welcome to video number 12 of Rick's Pipe Dream Magnetic Motor Generator Project Series. I'll be picking up right here where I left off in the uh, previous video, video number 11. Uh, at, the, at the end of that video, I, I showed you the braking effect, uh, which, which I had also demonstrated in video number two. Now, with the stator mounted securely like this, um, when you hit that braking effect, you have a problem. Uh, I showed you in video number three how that can be overcome. Uh, by holding the stator in my hand and lifting my hand when I came to that point. If I raise the stator a little bit to um, uh, lessen the uh, repulsive effect, the, uh, the rotor would keep rotating beyond that point and then I could drop it down once the uh, magnet group was engaged as it is now. I can drop it back down again. You see there's very little interaction in the middle portion of this uh, magnet groove. Very little at all. It's effortless to move this rotor. The strong forces are at the ends. I think I've demonstrated that well enough. Repulsion and attraction here at this end. Now the reason uh, the uh, rotor does continue to rotate to the second group, when I let go, the reason it does continue to rotate into the second group instead of being pulled back in a traction here is because the, the rotor is moving at a fast enough rate, it has momentum inertia, and that's what keeps it going past this uh, point. This point is uh, what is referred to as the sticky point. You see, if, if I let go right here, it just rocks back and forth. It doesn't want to leave that. It wants to stay here. It's stuck like glue. So we call that the sticky point. Uh, some people call also call the repulsive point a sticky point, but that's not really accurate. If you're simply in high repulsion at that this point, and the wheel's going to want to go one way or the other. Okay. So, uh, if we had all south-facing groups set up here, and had the stator arm located like it is, we could get a continuous rotation if we were able to somehow lift the uh, stator arm, uh, which would then lift the stator magnet, as we approach that uh, the second group here, where the, uh, where the braking point is. When we approach that, we hit the brake. See? So if we lift the stator up, like I did with my hand in video number three, uh, it would go right past that and continue on, uh, and, and the rotation would just continue and continue, you see. I'd have to lift up at that point, and then drop it back down at this point, somewhere along through this course here. It could be anywhere along here, see. And then I'd get the, uh, at the tail end here, I'd get, I'd get a strong uh, kick, See at the beginning I get a, a kick to the right, and at this end, watch, it's easier to see if I move, let this go slowly. See how that sped up right at the tail end here? That's a kick. See? Get a, uh, uh, get a kick here, a repulsive kick because the uh, south is repelling it from the south and uh, you're getting momentum, continuing the momentum, and then the north repels the north still further, which continues the kick, see, like that. And we come around to the next group. Now this, could, this stator arm could be 
set up in such a way that it, that it would lift up. Uh, say, for example, let me tip this up a moment. Say, for example, if you had a bearing in this joint here instead of this uh, stationary pipe. Let's say you have a, a nice, easy-moving bearing up here, which would allow the stator arm to swivel up a little bit, lifting the magnet. Uh, then you'd want to have a locking mechanism to uh, lock the maximum drop so, because you'd want it to come right back to this level again, one inch uh, separation. See that? that? That would be the idea there. That's what you'd want to do. And uh, you could do the lifting either mechanically uh, by uh, hooking up a track system that would, uh, something would ride the track and when it gets to, to the um, point here where you want it to lift, uh, there would be a rise in the track and, uh, and this would follow it. See, this would follow the track and, and be moved up. Also, the strong repulsive effect uh, might be, might possibly be enough alone to lift this stator arm when it gets to that point of repulsion uh, because uh, it's, it's a very strong repulsive effect. And uh, one way that you might possibly be able to do that is by uh, setting up a spring-loaded mechanism here. Uh, the springs would be somewhat on the weak side and this block would uh, have springs on top of it and uh, then there'd be another block which is held steady and the springs would compress upwards uh, the block would move upwards, compressing the springs and when you hit that strong repulsive effect and then it would uh, drop back down again from the spring pressure. See, there's, there's no force in, in this zone, see, so the springs would be enough to bring it back down. The springs plus the actual weight of the uh, stator arm is, would be plenty enough to bring it back down. The only drawback I see to that is that, um, of course, you're um, making a, a motion upwards right at this point and then dropping it back down again very quickly. See, so it's a, it's a quick jump like that. See? And um, that's what I don't like about that. Also, um, you tend to uh, miss out a little bit because uh, you are changing the height of the uh, stator magnet. Uh, I, I'd like to keep the stator magnet uh, parallel to the wheel at all times and I can do that uh, in uh, my other moving stator mode which I demonstrated which uh, places the magnet, the stator magnet across the wheel instead of in, in alignment with the rim. That way I can maintain the height at all times. So I don't need an up-down movement that way. But I'm just uh, showing you some ideas. Someone may want to uh, go with this idea of uh, moving it up and down. And that's how it would be done. Okay. Now, um, I think I've fairly well covered the basics of uh, what actually occurs with the magnet interactions and the stator arm when it's used in this manner. As you can see, the, um, the only other thing I wanted to mention here was that uh, the hardest thing of all when holding the stator magnet in my hand, like this, the hardest part about that was that um, I had to maintain uh, my spacing. I couldn't get this close. I couldn't get this close uh, one inch spacing between the magnet sets. Uh, that, that just wouldn't have worked. It would have slammed right down onto the magnets or the wheel. And, and it's very difficult to maintain that when it's handheld. Okay, so I just wanted to mention that. My time's up. Bye-bye.